Welcome to our show, The China Briefing. Today, we're diving into the latest developments that could reshape the economic landscape in Southeast Asia as Trump's anticipated tariffs loom large. Malaysian recruiters are voicing concerns over the potential impact of these tariffs, which could drive foreign investors away and destabilize the region's economies, particularly in Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. With Southeast Asian nations now scrambling to forge new economic alliances, the stakes have never been higher. In other news, Guangdong province is making headlines as anti-corruption watchdogs intensify their investigations into former officials in cities like Dongguan and Huiju. With a significant uptick in the number of officials being punished this year, the local government's influence over land sales is under scrutiny. This wave of investigations signals a strong commitment to rooting out corruption, but what will it mean for the region's stability? Lastly, we have an intriguing development from the US, where President-elect Trump has nominated hedge fund manager Scott Besant as Treasury Secretary. Known for his pro-tariff stance, Besant's appointment could lead to a hardline economic agenda against China. As he prepares to take on this crucial role, many are curious about how his strategies will unfold amidst ongoing trade tensions. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. South China Morning Post reports that the looming second term of Donald Trump poses significant concerns for Southeast Asian economies like Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam, which previously benefited from the trade war between the US and China. As Chinese firms sought to escape punitive tariffs by relocating their manufacturing operations, these countries experienced a surge in investment and job creation. However, with Trump's return, there is apprehension that new tariffs could be even more severe, potentially reaching up to 20% on imports from countries with trade surpluses with the US. This could lead to a retreat of foreign investors, a plunge in exports, and stalled growth in new industries. Countries like Thailand are exploring new economic alliances and free trade agreements to mitigate the potential fallout, while others are preparing for possible retaliatory tariffs against US firms. In a different context, the same publication highlights the ongoing anti-corruption investigations in Guangdong province, particularly in Dongguan, often dubbed Sin City due to its notorious underground activities. The investigations have ensnared numerous former officials, including Xu Jianhua, the former party secretary, who is now under scrutiny for serious violations of discipline and law. The investigations seem to center around land sales, where local township governments wield considerable influence, leading to corrupt practices. The public's attention has been captured by the high-profile detentions of former officials, including the former mayor of Dongguan, reflecting a broader crackdown on corruption in the province. This wave of investigations has exposed the deep-seated collusion between officials and developers, raising concerns about governance and integrity in the region. Lastly, the South China Morning Post also reports on Trump's nomination of hedge fund manager Scott Besant as the next Treasury Secretary, a move that signals a tough economic stance against China. Besant is expected to work closely with other key appointments, including Howard Lutnick as Commerce Secretary, to implement a pro-tariff agenda. Trump's administration aims to replace income taxes with tariff revenues and has proposed steep tariffs on Chinese imports, including a staggering 200% on electric vehicles. This hardline approach, which has already led to a trade war during Trump's first term, raises concerns among US trading partners and could exacerbate tensions with China, especially as the US continues to tighten export controls on sensitive technologies. The backdrop of these developments includes the recent calls from Chinese leaders for cooperation on trade, signaling a complex and contentious economic relationship moving forward. Axios reports that President-elect Trump has chosen Scott Besant, a financier with a strong background in global macroeconomics, as his Treasury Secretary. This move positions Besant as the leading economic official for the incoming administration, bringing with him extensive expertise in bond and currency markets, as well as a unique connection to hedge fund manager George Soros. Besant, who founded Key Square Capital Management and previously served as chief investment officer at Soros Capital Management, has been a vocal supporter of Trump, actively fundraising and defending his policies. Despite Trump's aggressive tariff threats, Besant has sought to temper concerns, suggesting that the tariffs are merely a starting point for negotiations and that Trump ultimately identifies as a proponent of free trade. 
Axios further highlights that Besant's nomination culminates a competitive selection process for a position closely scrutinized by financial markets, as his appointment could signal the direction of Trump's economic policy. With significant tax cuts from the Trump era set to expire soon, Besant's role will be pivotal in advocating for the administration's fiscal agenda on Capitol Hill. He will also oversee economic relations with other countries, addressing the challenges posed by Trump's tariff threats and the existing tensions with China. The dynamic between Besant and Howard Lutnick, the newly appointed Commerce Secretary, remains uncertain, as their differing views on tariffs could influence future trade relations. Nikkei Asia reports on a new agreement between New York City and Tokyo aimed at enhancing economic collaboration, particularly in supporting startups from both cities. This memorandum of understanding focuses on sharing data, aiding business expansion, and facilitating communication and knowledge exchange. Andrew Kimball, president of the New York City Economic Development Corporation, expressed enthusiasm for the potential growth and innovation that this partnership could foster. With both metropolitan areas being global economic powerhouses, this agreement comes at a time of shifting political landscapes in both the US and Japan. As the two nations navigate their respective challenges, including a potentially stronger dollar and a struggling yen, this collaboration may provide a crucial platform for mutual economic development amidst broader geopolitical concerns. South China Morning Post reports that analysts in the US are closely monitoring how Donald Trump's administration will approach Taiwan, a contentious issue between the US and China. There are mixed opinions on whether Trump will use Taiwan as a bargaining chip for economic concessions from Beijing or if he will face significant political backlash for any compromises made. Zhichuan Zhu from Bucknell University highlights the complexity of the Taiwan issue, noting that it is intertwined with broader US China relations. While Trump has appointed hawkish figures to his foreign policy team, his comments during the campaign suggested a transactional approach, raising concerns among Taiwanese officials about their island's future security. The Taiwan Relations Act binds the US to a certain policy framework regarding Taiwan, complicating any potential deals. Analysts warn that any concessions made by the US could undermine its credibility in Asia and encourage other nations to reconsider their stances towards China. Nikkei Asia outlines Kioxia Holdings' plans for a mid-December initial public offering, IPO, as it aims to solidify its position in the competitive memory chip market. The IPO is projected to raise approximately 27.7 billion yen, with Kioxia looking to invest heavily in its facilities alongside Western Digital, supported by significant government subsidies. The company's ownership structure is shifting, with Bain Capital reducing its stake post-IPO, while South Korean rival SK Hynix's convertible bonds could soon make it a major shareholder. Kioxia's focus remains on maintaining its capital investment at 20% of revenue and managing its debt levels, as it navigates a challenging market landscape exacerbated by increasing competition from Chinese manufacturers and the need for future restructuring. Despite a weakening memory market, Kioxia anticipates growth driven by demand from artificial intelligence data centers by 2025. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email. News breaks, buzz the ground, stories spit, walls come down, voices merge in the sound, faces mix in the crowd. Broadcasters paint the scene, world events on our screen, every link a different theme, words collide in the stream. Six degrees connect the dots. Background stories for the nuts Give the voices rise a lot Truth unveils in every spot